Well, welcome back to another episode of Buffalo Happy Hour. Mike, what's going on? Derek, stretching my back. Round two of episode, what is it, 140? No, not even close. 139. No, I'm just kidding. It's uh, <laughs> 133? 34? This is 135 and 136. Okay, so close. Yeah, close. We're doing good. Not even close. Yeah, nailed it. Uh, welcome back. So, Addies, what's up? Appreciate your logo. Uh, Queen City Creative Works is our sponsor. If you want to pick up branded items from us, go to queencitycreativeworks.com, click shop now on our logo, and then pick up a bottle opener, water bottle, or a four-pack of coasters that are slate. Super nice. They can ship it right to you. Queen City Creative Works, thank you for your continued sponsorship. High Peaks Imagery, if you want first-person drone footage of your business to increase your marketing uh, appeal, then contact High Peaks at High Peaks Imagery and... Have them work with you. They can take your marketing to another level. So, High Peaks, thank you for your continued sponsorship. And, uh, Derek, we were just talking about smartwatches and people going with uh, very interesting decisions that they make on their own. So, outside of that, I have a useless fact for you about the Kennedys. Mm. You ready? Sure. I think you'll like this one. It's about insider trading. Oh, my Wh- favorite. Which I think is interesting because it's kind of a hot topic as of late with COVID. Uh, people in Congress may or may not have known a thing or two about a thing or two. So, Congress. anyways. JFK's father, Joseph Kennedy, made much of his fortune through insider trading. FDR later made him the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission. <laughs> uh, when asked why he appointed a crook, FDR replied... Set a thief to catch a thief. Kennedy proceeded to outlaw the practices that made him rich. So... So is Nancy Pelosi going to be the next chief of the Security and Exchange Commission? Uh, it's funny because one of the top comments in the thread is, made it illegal for everyone but politicians. They're still doing it. Uh, the fact that politicians are doing it doesn't make it in any way legal. Get the point and stop the red herring. Uh, your post makes no sense. Correct. That rebuttal was a moronic statement. So anyways, moving on. I think it's annoying. But, you know, what we should do is have another airline crash into the ocean like Malaysia Airlines. And then we can just put money into them because they're only going to go up instead of down. You know, that's what we need. Is that an altitude joke? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Like, if you really dig down into it, how much the people in the senate and the house make and then you see their net worth and it's like all right you clearly you're clearly doing some illegal shit even cuomo at the state level now he's suing the board of ethics for his book signing yeah, profits what's that about? he's a dumpster fire he's basically I, I don't know we'll see if he runs again i'm leaving so we got to talk about one of the, like the biggest things that hit new york in a good like republican way which was they shot down that whole gerrymandering thing. Yeah, with the maps. It could still get through, though. Like, it's not Well, of course they're going to... Yeah. Yeah, they're going to appeal it, and the appellate court in, in our state is extremely liberal. Extremely liberal. But it's... Yeah. I'm glad a judge is just like, this isn't even remotely close to legal. Like, you can't just drastically <laughs> change district lines to favor one party. But why is that even in the state's control to redistrict? Like, they're talking about if this doesn't get through... They'll have to hire an independent zoning board, basically, to redo yeah. the district lines to make it, like, actually fair. It should be based off of population, right? Like, that—that that is the whole concept of district lines. But the way that Democrats are doing it is they're drawing district lines for populations that cut into Republican sections to basically remove a Republican from office based on there's not enough population. So why is that whole districting a state thing? Why shouldn't it be an independent zoning board for every state. I don't know the history behind it. It's a good question. And it's frustrating because it also warrants the question of why is New York State involved in private business? There needs to be more separation. And I I don't know if I'm out of my mind for saying this. I know that there's people that agree with me, but I just feel like big government's never the answer, period. So Has it ever been the answer? No. Same thing with, which was, this was actually brought up um, recently by the dude that was on 
JRE for, like, private security. He said, think about our nation. And I'm somewhat paraphrasing here, but then also mad libbing and adding to his point. When you think about our history, we as a nation, as people, questioned the king, right? And we're like, we don't agree with the taxes. We don't agree with A, B, and C. So we're questioning the authority that you have over us. And we're also questioning why we have to do what you're proposing that we do. We ended up revolting and saying, nah, and then sent the letter back and then fought a war over it mm-hmm. and then gained our own independence. <clears throat> Very uh, similar to recently during the pandemic, people questioned the government. And we're now questioning the king, in this case, the president of the past administration and the current administration, 45 and 46. And we're starting to say, like, I don't like how much power you have. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's there's been talk about a American Civil War since like 2008. I don't think it's going to happen. But it's why is it a bad thing to just ask questions and instead of just blindly following things, specifically when you if if you spend the couple minutes to just quickly search things and educate yourself, you realize when you follow the money that it's all corrupt based. So why not question it to then have a better life within the greatest country on earth? I think this goes back <clears throat> to everybody's personal life. We like to believe that we are the smartest in a category that we study or we have experience in. And the most recent example that I can bring up, which is probably going to ruffle some feathers, but abortion. Everybody believes men don't have a say at all, which that whole concept of you're not a woman, you don't have a say, is the same concept for everything. Like, you're not poor, you don't have a say what we do with the welfare system. You're not you're not rich, you don't have a say of taxes or whatever. It's this whole identity politics where if you don't fit into a certain category, you should have no say in what happens, which is wrong. Like, that's not how you get a cohesive culture is by saying you're left. You don't have any say on what the right does. You're right. You don't have any say about what the left does. I think that's the whole issue with all this is Mm -hmm. that everybody gets so ingrained into their whole – you don't you're not a scientist you can't talk about covid it's, it's like shut up like that's not how you do this you can be sensible but not have a degree you can also be stupid and have a degree like that those two about having consciousness and being able to discuss an issue has no relation to the degree that you have you can be dumb and have a degree you can have, be smart and not have a degree like just why are we inhibiting conversation? Like, like you said, it doesn't make sense. Don't let formal education get in the way of uh, what's that quote from? I think it was. I don't know if it was Einstein or not. Hold on. Don't let. Don't let education get in the way of your learning. I think it is. Um, get in the way. Who said it might have been Tom Sawyer? Hold on. Don't let schooling get in the way of your education. Mark Twain. So I wholeheartedly believe that. And I wrote my final thesis on that at Hilbert and really pissed off my professor, who was also my advisor in college, who like helped me set up my classes for the semester. And I, I literally said, formal education can make you a living. Self-education can make you a fortune. And wrote a, my final thesis on it to get my bachelor's degree. He hated it. And then at graduation, he shook my hand and then gave me, like, the man the man hug where you, like, shake hands, bring him in, and then one mm-hmm. arm around the back. And he's like, you're not wrong in your paper. It's just tough for me sometimes to separate myself from the system that I, you know, I not only make my living in, but my entire family comes from educators. And I'm like, it's not a dig at, edu- like, teachers at all. It's just there are other ways to learn that are just as important as mm-hmm. a formal education that's your uh, – what do they call college? Um, a waste of time. No, well, obviously that and like robbery, but um, it's it's like your further or continued education. Continued education. Continued yeah. education, which there's there's merit to it. You know what I mean? Like college is amazing. It opens up a lot of eyes, 
But even when we graduated in 2014, we were ready to leave. Mm -hmm. And it was right at the, the precipice of this absolute nonsense with too many opinions are getting involved in the curriculum, and it's not vital to anybody's growth. It's really not. Like, yeah. traveling is vital to someone's growth. Yeah, and also I think that, kind of to go back to your first point, there's a lot of people that think that disagreement means personal conflict, which... Wait, one more time? Disagreement means, like, person, like a personal attack. So if Correct. I disagree with you, that means I hate you as a person, mm -hmm. which is also furthering this divide of being able to question things. Just because I don't believe in the COVID vaccine doesn't mean I want you to die because I want to contract COVID and give it to you and kill you. And saying you're anti-vax mandates doesn't mean you're anti-vax. Correct. There's just there's too many people that are so set in their beliefs and any contradictory statements made to their beliefs is meant is seen as a personal attack. Mm -hmm. Which I I think I heard this a little bit ago and I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. We have We've talked about this multiple times before where we have um, enemies of the United States that do not have term limits, and they could be in office for 30 years like Putin, yeah, right. and we recycle presidents potentially every four years. So the time that a president is in, is, is in office, they're only able to really work on practical things for like a year because the rest of the time they're spent either closing up their campaign, starting up their campaign, campaigning, and all that stuff. It's garbage. Is there any value to having, like, a panel of presidents that are the president? Like, in the Supreme Court. We don't have one dude that's running the entire Supreme Court. We have a ton of people on the Supreme Court, seven people that are on the Supreme Court, that make decisions based off of a basically a panel of people that have the authority to make that decision. They're not... They're there for a lifetime. I'm not saying presidents should be there for a lifetime. But why do we have one dude up there that we're touting around as being the end-all, be-all dude? And our current guy can't even stay conscious for more than five minutes. So is there any benefit of having a panel of leaders that lead our country? Or is it all just going to be one president for the rest of our life? Well, there is a panel, right? You have a cabinet that works with the president in conjunction that mm -hmm. is... But not, they're not elected leaders. They're appointed. By our president. Which then they have to go through the process to actually get uh, into the position. Yeah, but we're not So they're voted them. on. It's Correct. Everyone that's corrupt that's in there for a lifetime is voting. Correct. On. But that's I think what it really stems down to is the system is perfect. It's just not used correctly. So, like, checks and balances for balance of power between the three branches of government. I don't know if that's being utilized like it was intended it's when not you correct know that, yeah correct right so i think that's the problem is corruption and greed and lifelong politicians have ruined the system but the system itself isn't the problem it's the people that are in it so we just need people to get out do you think that there's ever the whole concept of term limits is there a position that doesn't that you believe shouldn't have term limits is there a, like, regarding the Supreme Court? No, just in, in politics in general. Like, is there a position in politics that you think shouldn't have a term limit? No. Like, what about the, um, I think everything director of the limit. FBI or the director of the CIA? Yeah, that should have a limit too. You think so? Yeah. Because, again, you go back to that whole thing about where is the contin like continuity between presidents and everything like that? Like, who is relaying you? build in so many layers of people changing. This is not an advocacy for dictatorship or anybody staying in power for a lifetime. This is not. But if you have somebody that has been studying Putin's movement for the past 16 years, yeah, and then they're in office for four, or they're at the, the director of the FBI for four, the CIA for four, I should say, not FBI, then they got to leave. There's going to be some sort of knowledge gap between the next person that comes in. Like they're not going to understand everything completely. So isn't that technically a vulnerability in the system where there's no continuity of knowledge? Everything is duplicatable. So it really just comes down to the current leader grooming for people under him to then replace him when he leaves. I think that's what's missing in government, in business, and in critical uh, federal alphabet soup agencies is 
that I don't know if that's happening. I'm also not within that system right. to really know. But I I mean that's the benchmark of a good leader is sharing all of your nuggets and then grooming somebody to replace you so that when you leave it's not so much of a gap and I don't know if that's happening in the civilian world I just don't and even within the military the generals are not what they used to be tell you that and I think a lot of society has impacted things that it shouldn't have impacted society should never ever get in the way of what the military's mission is period so all of the nonsense is w- really what I call it. And you can call me old school or whatever. I just don't agree with it. Like the military's goal is to protect the country and kill the enemy. Mm-hmm. That's it. So if you want to, you know, try to inhibit or change or do any of this nonsense, like just don't, as long as it doesn't render or hinder the mission, then which is protect the country and kill the enemy, then okay. But once you're starting to do all this nonsense of like whatever's going on and it's the hot topic of the week, that's when you have a problem. So, and that's where I personally have a problem, really, because that's what makes us weak. And that's why you're seeing some of the things you're seeing globally is because we've had it too good for too long and the sense of entitlement's too high that it's impacting areas of our nation's main infrastructure where it's hindering our ability to really do anything. Who is the, who is the uh, highest military officer below the president? Like, who advises the president on things? The Joint Chiefs of Staff in the Cabinet. So they're all generals from different branches, mainly Army and Marines. Do they have term limits? Like The Joint Chief of Staff, yeah. yeah. They and, do? and they can get removed. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah. What's their term limit? Um, I think it's... Uh, let me see. I think it's just with that president. Because oh, all, of, yeah, all of the generals that Trump had aren't with Biden. If, if I'm correct on that. Well, that's another thing, too. And... <clears throat> There is no continuity because you don't want to set a Democrat up for success. You don't want to set a Republican up for success because it's all that person's bad. Mm-hmm. So when Trump left, I can guarantee you he didn't do any knowledge share to Biden's team or anyone on Trump's team did any knowledge share to Biden's team because no one wants Biden to succeed and vice versa. When Biden loses, because there's no way he can legally win this next election. There's no way. He's dead. He's been dead for the, since he got into office. And there's no way that he wins. But there's no way that his team adequately explains what's happening if a Republican comes in. That's just not... It's all Democrats are better and Republicans suck, or Republicans are better and Democrats suck. There's no... Right. That's not going to happen. I don't foresee Biden getting a second term. There's no way he does. Yeah, I just But he's going to run. It. Well, of course. I just don't see it, though. Um, I just don't think it's logical. Yeah. Did you find out their term limits or no? If not, that's fine. I mean, I don't. I just didn't know if that, if term limits even extended to the military. Chairman's prohibited. Let me see. Check Google, quick. Term length four years, non-renewable. Found it. Four years, not renewable. Interesting. I'm out of coffee. So the military has it. The president has it. The governors have it. Why doesn't... Or the governors don't have it. The governors have it. They just don't have a... That, that's my biggest complaint with New York renew, State. Yeah. That's my biggest complaint with New York State. They have term limits. They don't have consecutive term limits. Meaning you are the governor for four years, but you can constantly get reelected, 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 so you're in for ten years, which mm-hmm. I think is absolute nonsense. Or whatever it is. If it's, if it's not four, it's, it's yeah. whatever the math. But... That's what I don't agree with. Like, you shouldn't be able to stay in power for, you know, consecutive terms at a, after a certain point, in my opinion. It should – you – everyone should essentially follow what Stefan Mihailu did. Got elected by the people, did his term, re-ran, didn't get re-elected, tried for a different position, didn't get elected, and then went back into the private sector and went back to work. Like, perfect. And then someone new was involved, and – I don't even know who the current Erie County Comptroller is. I have literally no idea. Yeah, I don't know either. But there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you're elected by the people. You do your term. You try again. If you're not reelected, then you go right back to work, and then you just keep crushing your life. Like, it's not – it shouldn't be this thing where you're you're in the system, and then you're just trying to ride it out for as long as possible, and then you're in the know. It's – Kevin Hardwick. Never heard of them. No, me either. 
so I just that's where that's where I struggle. What? What are you shaking your head for? Because I just I Google Erie County Comptroller and the it's Kevin Hardwick, Kevin Hardwick, and then the next article from WKBW says County Comptroller Mahaliu rarely shows up to work. It's just stupid political stuff. Yeah. Um but yeah, I I agree. There should be term limits on everything. Um but you you do assume the risk of continuity and knowledge share because even if I do my best to tell you what I know, you're still going to be not as well educated as I am on that topic because of the whole telephone game. Like there's mm-hmm. there's going to be some miscommunications there and with a place like Russia and China where they do have continuity for 30 plus years, we're at an inherent disadvantage in that aspect. That's how you just kill the enemy. <laughs> Do you see Biden called him to be killed? Yeah. I just... It's not the right thing to do. Not when you have an unstable dude that has nuclear weapons. It's really interesting to see Biden talk, and then within 10 minutes, the all the people under him and around him reverse chorus and say that's not what we meant to say. Like, obviously. So just remove... And it's too hot right now. The current events are too hot to have somebody so mentally unstable yeah. to be. And it's not from like a Kim Jong Un standpoint of mentally unstable. It's from a literal cognitive ability mentally unstable. He's just not there, yeah. and it's not good. And it's the pillar signal to the world of <sighs> that. There's that's so weak. It's ridiculous. Like that's not a good thing to show people that want nothing more than to ruin and wipe out the west so again this is not a political stance but i just find it funny to uh point out george bush aged crazy when he was in office correct obama he looked completely different when he was done with office yeah biden already aged 10 years in office that could be his mental state that could be the stress of the job trump didn't age a minute when he was in office no he didn't that's wild yeah. Because he, like, <laughs> and I always go back to the example. He just didn't care what anybody said. He, there could be, like, the biggest scandal out there, and he's like, yeah, probably. Like, y- do you really think that all women are fat pigs? No, just Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> like, it is, that is the attitude that you have to have. He had no, like, regard. he didn't age at all. Yeah, he had no regard. And to me, that is just so, so hilarious. Like, it's not everybody's cup of tea, and it shouldn't be the leader of the country, but... His I don't care attitude is the was the best entertainment for the past four years than that we will ever have again. Yeah. Unless he wins again. Which I don't foresee either. No. I'm just curious to see what happens in 2022 in New York State, and then I'm really curious to see what happens in 2024 nationally. Yeah. So, okay. So back to the entire um, New York State gerrymandering aspect. Now that the Supreme – or the uh, state court shot it down – there can be a um, appeal to it, but right now, as it goes, since that was shot down, it cannot be completed before the midterms. Is that accurate? I believe so, which really hurts the Dems. That's yeah. why they were pushing to change it now, because they know they're losing support. Yeah. I mean, bail reform is an utter failure, uh, Failure, yeah. right? And closing prisons is an utter failure. Um, I mean, closing – most people don't even know, but, like, closing Gowanda prison – really impacts Gowanda as a town oh, yeah. really impacts Gowanda. So, which sure, I, I know the first comment's going to be, there's nothing there, but one stop sign of Tim Hortons in the jail anyways, but there's still a lot of economic stimulus that was coming from the jail that is just closed. And all those people are just either sent to Elmira, Attica, or just like put back on the streets. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people within the state that are getting yelled at by the state for not releasing more prisoners. Like, that's not okay. Like you, sh- there's a lot of people that should not be on the streets. So, and I mean, we've we've talked about it a lot early on, but like, there's a the dark conversation that's always a joke, but there's some like seriousness to it. Like, if you could wipe out anybody on Earth to save Earth, who would it be? Like, death row inmates, pedophiles, and the morbidly 600-pound obese people that literally do nothing anyways. Yeah, and everyone on cruise ships. Yeah, and then then 
you know, you get into like the Bill Burr jokes and stuff like that, but it's, there's like that very, very real conversation of what is the state's end goal with the current people that are in prison and the people that should be in prison. Like recently, one human being who was 28 years old decided to shoot and injure three Buffalo police. Like, here you go, one nine mil for five cents, end their life, move on. You know, like, you know what I mean? Obviously, you have no regard to be here anyways. There's something mentally unstable with you. What what good do you bring to society? Oh, nothing? Perfect. Like, why are you here? There, And, you know, if I get canceled, I don't really care because I just won't check the internet. But the thing that bothers me is there's people that really shouldn't be on earth anymore Mm -hmm. like jeffrey dahmer shouldn't have been on earth for as long as he was same with manson and there's some real serious like pedophile rapists that shouldn't exist like just eradicate them and if anybody hurts dogs eradicate them like it's just like you just there comes a point where we should kind of resort back to instead of having radical compassion for everything and everyone, we should try to dial it back and just be like, you know what? We're just going to kind of let these people weed themselves out. Like we shouldn't foster and help facilitate heroin use in a state facility that allows people to overdose. Like that's, that's not good. And that's not good for anybody. So, that's where I struggle internally is at what point are we just going to kind of say like be gone with you so that we can just kind of clean some things up. There's so there's a flying here. According to data from Vera, I don't know who Vera is, but she sounds like a horror. The average oh cost, <laughs> the average cost per person in prison ranges from about 14,000 to $70,000 per year. So you get this dude from Buffalo that just shot at three Buffalo cops. You're imprisoning him for years, costing the state seventy thousand dollars per year. Yeah, it's not like there has to be, like, but, but now they get free iPads. Yeah, so which is great, um, and they get to have sex all the time with other inmates. So the, I, I understand the whole argument against uh, capital punishment and like, obviously all that stuff. Like, w- what if they're innocent? Understood. But this dude that just drove and shot at f- three cops, there's no way he's innocent. Like, Correct. Like, we got him. Correct. So, why not? Correct. Especially if he killed an officer. Like, if you are willing to kill police officers... I went to a show the other day. W- remind me to talk about it because I was very, very aggravated. But I went... Uh, so, if you are willing to kill police officers, why not... Why can't we kill you? What is the argument for that? Yeah, what's, what's wrong with an eye for an eye? Right. Remember, it was 2010, 2011. 2011? Either way, we're in a class together, and we were asked as a class by the professor, capital punishment, yay or nay? Should should we kill people that are in jail that we know, like, all the variables were were removed? Like, you know, the, the outliers of they actually are innocent and all that nonsense. Like, this person did it 100%. How do you feel about capital punishment? And I literally almost stood up, and I was just like, "100%, we should go back to public hangings." <laughs> like, people need to know. Like, people need to know what happens when you do A, B, and C. And if your parents aren't going to do it within your house, then yeah, we're all going to go to Times Square, and we're going to watch this dude drop and hang and stay there until he dies because they did, you know, they touched a four-year-old girl and be gone with you, like nothing wrong with that we've killed people for less right and it saves everyone money like the dude finally dies he's there the whole the whole town is there watching it and then the person stands up at the podium and goes all right you all just saved seventy four thousand dollars because this person is 28 years old their expected life was up to this age and they would have been in jail and then here's all the numbers behind it we all just saved that money enjoy the rest of your weekend What's wrong with that? They publicly hanged Saddam Hussein. He was a dictator. He gassed his own people. He was a horrible human being. Great. Now we know. Like, hey, if I become a position of power and then I just start dropping chemical weapons on my own people, I'm, that's what's going to happen to me. So I'm not going to do that. It's like watching cops when you're a kid and then your mom looks at you and says, hey, that's what happens when you're an idiot. Break the law, run from the police, and then try to buy drugs. Don't do that. Like, 
you kind of learn your left and right limit, and that's not happening anymore because everything's fine. Everyone should be welcome to sit down at your dinner table. No. Like... Afghans should not be forced into American ideals, and Americans should not be forced into Afghanistan's right. ideals. We're all within our own little tribe, right? So, me, I connect really well with farmers, vets, law enforcement officers, entrepreneurs, um, well-traveled humans. Like, that's who I fit in with. That's my tribe. Like, we sit down, we drink Black Rifle coffee, we talk about less taxes, we shoot guns, and then we go to work five to six days a week. 8 to 14 hours a day, and then we're all about providing for our families, creating a stable house, and then there's contingency plans in place in case anything goes haywire. The problem with that... That's my tribe. Yeah. There's also people that sit down, and their tribe is a book club. They all sit down and they read. They all hang out. They talk about books. There's other people that hang out, and then they all travel together. Like, their little tribe travels. Like, Mm -hmm. everybody's got a tribe. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, we... There's nothing wrong with having your own people and your own tribe and your own wolf pack. Like, you shouldn't be trying to force others into your own little tribe. It's just not going to work. That's not how humans work. So that's kind of leads into, like, the open border thing. Like, close it, right? Like, there's a reason why the king and queen had a castle wall, right? Walls have been around forever. It's the same thing. Yeah. The problem with capital punishment, though, is where do you draw the line then? Like, what... what uh what crimes do you not kill people for? Petty theft. So, like, what about man, like involuntary manslaughter? Like, you kill somebody while driving a car. Are you drunk? No. But th- there's that whole intent thing. So now you're in this whole situation of you have somebody that killed somebody. Yeah. Now you have to verify intent, which is an open book because you have to be in their mind. Did they purposely kill somebody in the car? Like, did they drive down the sidewalk as, like, a terrorist threat? Or were they just driving down the street? It was a T-boned accident. He blew a red light. And then the person that got T-boned died. Uh, You're driving down the street. You don't stop at a crosswalk, and you just nail this woman. You don't know if it's accidental or not. He could have been on a rampage and just wanted to blow through intersections killing people. Right. But now you have to validate intent. Which is tough. So, like, where do you well, yeah, draw that, that line? That's, that's the justice yeah. system. That's why you just vote and you have... But but then you're bringing the justice system in and somebody who's interpreting this to see if it's voluntary or not. And then you're going to, whether it's voluntary, you're if it's voluntary and they meant to do it, you kill them. If it's not voluntary, then they go to prison. Now you're leaving that someone's life up to the justice system. Yeah. And so that's the tough and, part. And a panel of their peers. Right. But that's the tough part. Well, yeah. Sucks to suck. That's what happens <laughs> when there's too many people on earth. <laughs> You know, I I mean, there's a common line in here somewhere. There is absolutely, but yeah, I mean, if if you if you take a golden retriever to a bridge and drop it off the bridge, and somebody's got an EDC, I've no, me personally, no problems going up and just they go blow blow them right through their temple and then throw them over the bridge and then let the water do its thing and then they decompose. Like, who cares? Of course, it's lawlessness, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, it's a half joke. People, calm down. I just, I don't know, like, that's kind of where I struggle about it. But when there's, like, the obvious, like, yeah, like a Nazi officer that worked at Auschwitz, and there's there's multiple photos of that person doing a crime, you know, time and time again, sure. You know, put him against the wall, end it. You don't yeah. belong here. So, yeah, I mean, regarding capital punishment, that's where I'm at. Like, the, the obvious ones where it's there's no questions asked you don't have to think about intent because it's just like it's literally known yeah you just move on say one of the main nazi officers at auschwitz uh not birkenklau but auschwitz auschwitz one his house was like right off of there's a movie about it his house was like right off of auschwitz you can see his house right from damn near the main gate and they hung him at auschwitz it was a public hanging really yeah and they're just like here you go you know like it was it was nice justice to be had essentially forgot his name i forgot what his name was but yeah they it was a public hanging right at auschwitz what do you think about the reports of um ukrainian officials shooting um russian military people in the leg as like torture dude there's russians torturing ukrainians yeah I, i get that part but is there ever a is there ever a time where um, like the CIA's that done type worse, of, dude? Well, yeah, I know that, but is is that okay? Like, do you agree with that? Me personally, yeah, yeah. 
You invaded their country for absolutely no reason. They were peaceful people. They didn't want the Dumbas to become trench warfare either. They just wanted you to leave them alone as, as the prick neighbor ever since 2014 when you put your little puppet in power. So if you're coming in, invading the country and raping women and taking turns doing it, and then you're also taking elected well, officials. That's definitely a different story. Like if you're just a part of the military and you're captured from being a part of the military and now you're getting shot in the leg as torture, like it's not they're just a part of the military. They don't have a choice in this. There's also people that are just a part of the military that are raping local women. Well, yeah, and that's a different scenario. And they're, yeah, blow their head off. But if you're just someone in the military and you just get captured and now you're in a firing line and everyone's shooting your leg for torture, like, that's not cool. It sounds like what the U.S. did. Well, yeah, but that's not cool. You think that's cool? Well, it's not that it's cool. War's not cool. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's life, dude. That, that's a real world. That's what I mean. Like, there's, it's going to happen. There's, there's nasty people that exist. I mean, think about what Al Qaeda's done to local women in Afghanistan, and then we just pull out, and then we just we say that you know ISIS is in power or the Taliban's in power. Like, what are you talking about? I, I just the whole thing is nonsense. It's yeah. this falsehood of everybody is able to think and have the same moral uh, values and ideals that Americans have around the world. It's not how it works. Like, if you protest in Russia for gay rights, you get literally clubbed and thrown in jail. Right. Like, well, you can do it here. It's got to start somewhere. Say, stop trying to force your tribe into other people's tribes. Like, it's just not, that's not how that works. It's the same thing. That's that's my overall point. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's nastiness that exists on Earth. But again, there's too many people. There's 10 people in a tribe. You want to use the democracy's model, right? All of a sudden, two out of the ten are in power, and then those two people start telling the other eight, nope, this is exactly how it's done now. If the eight people turn around and say, that's stupid, I'm not doing that, and then laugh you out of power, it's a very good chance that that person just backs down, and they're just like, all right, you know, whatever, sounds good. Now, you have millions of people, and one person's in charge saying, this is exactly how you have to do it, and then they literally shut down your means of communication. The Hunter Biden thing is a great example. Mm -hmm. The computer... Um, article shut down you can't share a link you can't send it to anybody and then come to find out it's not russian collusion it is in fact a real thing and now there's actual crimes that are about to be charged for it but you're not able to question you're not able to laugh you're not able to be just be like no that you're out of your mind like we're not doing that and that's it that's not right either you know what i mean mm -hmm. so that's that's where i struggle and if you question me, you're questioning science is one of the worst quotes to ever come out of the entire pandemic. Well, there's a video of Fauci, like, what was it, like eight years ago or something, where he's on the news talking about the flu. And he's like, if you had the flu, that's the best vaccine. You had the flu. You have natural immunity. And now natural immunity just doesn't exist. Correct. Yeah, they failed to recognize it. Dude, I was watching the Bruins game the other day, and it said Bruin, or um, broadcast sponsored by Moderna. I'm like, this is so stupid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Pfizer, dude, s since 2020, or within the year of 2020, 75% of all ad revenue came from Big Pharma within the United States. That's disgusting. That's absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Why? You know what I mean? I just, I'll never understand. And it's not that I'm against big pharma like there's good medicines that exist because of big pharma that help millions of people but we're also over medicated we're the we're the wealthiest one of the wealthiest nations and we're one of the most unhealthy nations and we still spend i th dude how much do we spend a year on healthcare? i think it's like four trillion plus dollars Probably. a year and we're still unhealthy because of everything we do is just full of nonsense yeah. i'm over it dude there's a i read this article the other day of um legislation that was put in to reduce the cost of um insulin for diabetics yeah and the whole article was shaming republicans because only two republicans voted for the bill and the other however many republicans voted against the bill and i'm like why What's the reason behind it? Because, honestly, I could get behind. There's always the rational part where it's like, oh, this sounds like a good idea. But then when you dig into it, there's a reason why people are against things that are just, that are not like, oh, they're just bad people. Mm -hmm. Like that, That's the thing that I always keep trying to figure out. Because the, the headlines always say, 
Republicans vote against this and they're assholes, or Democrats vote against this and they're assholes. But trying to figure out the underlying reason why people are voting against it is a completely different story. So the whole insulin debate of how the government is saying we need to regulate the amount that we're charging for insulin because it's ridiculous. And I understand insulin is very ridiculous. There's some people that are charging $1,000 for a $5 thing that it costs to make insulin. Yeah. But do you really believe in your heart, people, that the government should be involved in price regulation of medication? No. That's where the Republicans are coming from. It's not that they want people with insulin to die. It's not that they want these pharmaceutical companies to make a ton of money off of insulin. It's that the government literally has no place to go in to industry and say, you can't do this. That's not the government's responsibility. And it shouldn't be the government's responsibility. It just bothers me so much that people don't understand that. And it's always left versus right. It's like, no, it's government has way too much power. Stop giving them more power to say to a company, you can't do this anymore. That's not how that works. Right. What was the show that you watched that aggravated you that you wanted me to remind oh, you I, of? I went to a I went to a concert. Okay. And there was like three people in the crowd that had a shirt from a band that was performing at the concert. And the back of the shirt said, cops aren't your friends. Cool. I'm like, this is so sweet. Did you punch him in the face? Dude, I don't know why <laughs> people want to bring politics into everything. I agree. Like, I'm going to a show to listen to a band, to listen to your music. Why Why are we doing this? It bothered me so much. And, like, as soon as I saw that, and then the band made a super political speech before they played their song. And it's like, God, I just, I wish in our life I can just do something for entertainment and not have politics be involved. Like, why is that such a hard ask? Like, even when I'm watching sports, NFL, and racism everywhere, it's like, God, I just, Bill Burr has the best skit. It's like, I'm watching a game. I don't want to hear about cancer all the time. Like, I understand shit sucks. This is entertainment. Let me be entertained. Why do I, you have to keep reminding me about all the shit that's happening? I just want to forget for an hour while I watch this hockey game, while mm-hmm. I watch this football game. Mm-hmm. It's so frustrating. That's why I watch golf so much. We struggle with it, too. Trying not to get super political on on the show. That's a good point. It, good it's point. just it's tough because of the amount of nonsense that we have to deal with in this country, politically speaking. Not like obviously we have it super good here, but I'm just saying the politics involved. Is ju- it's just it's very difficult. Weekly episodes are a different story, though. I think, and this isn't me trying to justify our past hour and thirty minute rant, but. The weekly show is a recap of our week, and there's a lot of shit that goes on during the week, like current events that we need to talk about, or that you and I want to talk about. Yeah, right. So I think interviews and Wednesday Whiskey Reviews and stuff like that, you won't get politics for the most part, but episodes you probably will. (laughs) (laughs) The only reason Stefan was really on was because of what he did to keep small businesses alive through a global pandemic, which is commendable. So if you're against that, then okay. Sorry. Yeah, don't watch it. I yeah. whatever, but I still love those comments. I was looking for a reason to unsubscribe, and this is it. Why? Why were you looking for a reason to unsubscribe in the first place? Right. Like, all right. Uh, see you later. Whatever. And then we just blew up after that. So it's fine. Whatever. Correct. See you later. It's not worth it. Literally not worth it. <sighs> but yeah, man, we're uh, at an hour and a half. Hour and thirty-one. That means roughly forty-five minutes per episode. I'll take it. Anything else you want to talk about? Vote red. No, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) No. Don't take politics out of this show, but bring Trump back for another term. (laughs) Honestly, don't. Don't. In the Republican primaries, don't. We do not need him in office again. (laughs) Right. I'm curious to see who does run. Also, um, after further uh, thought provoking analysis, I tend to agree with every comedian in regards to the Will Smith thing, and you should never be able to just go on stage and slap somebody because of a joke. It's comedy. Um, I've also said it multiple times on this show, comedy is the one thing that is basically never... There's nothing ever off limits, and nothing's ever too soon. Like, that's the beautiful thing about comedy. So if you can't laugh, then that's a you problem and not the comedic's uh, viewpoint or standpoint or prerogative or whatever you want to say. I was listening it's to... Not the com- it's not the comedian's problem. Yeah, I was listening to... I think it was JRE. And he said if we didn't have a comedian doing... Like, hosting the Oscars, no one would watch it. Most people are watching it 
Because, the, like, Ricky Gervais, when he did it and he just roasted everybody, that was hilarious. Nobody actually watched it for the content of the Oscars. These award ceremonies where the rich Hollywood elite get into a room and they talk about how successful they are, like, why are we doing this? I've said that, like, four, that should be the title of this episode. Why are we doing this? Because why? That doesn't make any sense. And if Chris Rock or Ricky Gervais didn't host it, no one would watch it. I I think Will Smith was an idiot for doing that. I agree. But again, I think it was all built up aggression and anger and humiliation of everything that Jada put him through. Women are all evil. Just kidding. Uh, I think that that's the reason why he did it. And it was just a burst of outrage that was inaccurately directed at Chris Rock mm-hmm. for something Jada did. Yeah. Men are sensitive, man. Men are sensitive. We put up a wall, but we're sensitive. So are, I mean, so are people that, I mean, so are, so are people in the yeah. general public, which, you know, I mean, if you're listening to this, then, and if you're new here, nine out of ten times, the things we say are a joke with some seriousness, yeah. and it's not, I mean... I don't know. We say things that aren't politically correct, so correct. deal with it because that's who we are. So wah. We don't know what we're talking about 90% of the time. Yeah. But what we do know is that the voting for the Buffalo Spree's best podcast goes until May 1st. Found that out Okay. after some research. So go vote for your boys at the Buffalo Happy Hour. Go to that link listed in the description below and vote for us as the bu- best of Buffalo podcast. We'd really appreciate it. We are probably one of the only super, super consistent podcasts that – do all this stuff, and we do it all for free for all these businesses. We never charge anything for them, and this is just our way of hoping that you guys recognize us so other people in Buffalo can recognize us because the more people that recognize the Buffalo Happy Hour is doing the Lord's work, the more we can help all these businesses grow because we still have business interviews until mid-May scheduled. So Yeah, it's amazing. We just recently updated yeah, our calendar. We're crushing it. So. Go vote for us over there. If you are interested in our whiskey that we released with Klein and Kilty, it is available at Eddie's. We are going to be doing some sort of event around that to uh, let people try it before they buy it, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so we're going to be doing that relatively soon. Keep your eyes on our Instagram page at the official Buffalo Happy Hour or our Facebook page at Buffalo Happy Hour to be notified of when that's going to be happening and then also to follow our journey as we continue this thing called life. we got a lot of stuff coming on. Mike and I have been doing these double recording episodes. If you do like that, let us know below. We've been doing it because I'm going to be going on vacation next week. Mike's going to be going on a work trip at the end of April. So we're going to be doing these uh, double episodes probably for maybe one more week just so we have some sort of backlog if this ever happens again because our life is constantly changing. So, yeah, that's going to be that. While Mike is gone, we're going to be doing a special interview where it's just going to be me. It's going to be really awkward. It's going to be hysterical. It's going to be me and Dan. He is going to come. I, I messaged him, which is great because I don't know what I'm talking about. So it'll be cool to have that liaison there to facilitate the conversation. So that'll be pretty cool. But, um, yeah, some cool things coming up. Make sure you're following all of us uh, on all of our social media and our platforms, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, please subscribe, leave a like on this video, and a comment down below what your favorite part of today's episode was. Mike, anything to add? Our Wednesday whiskey reviews are going to be a little different, so be on the lookout for those because there's going to be some weird ones thrown in the mix. Oh, yeah. So Unfortunately. I'm, uh, I'm working on that as we speak. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, everybody, thank you very much for your time today. Please remember to always drink responsibly. Be a good person. Hey, Michael. Do not litter. We're out.